Evening. While lots of things is happening on my car, it's pretty much done. The nitrous is all hooked up. The wiring is all complete. It's all good. And this car now has a VR6 in it. This video is about neither of them. That will be for another video. This one is a bit of turbo tech. And I'm going to use the turbo from this to explain it. Basically, I see this all the time, people saying this, and it, it's bloody annoying. But you always see people going, I can't get that twin scroll turbo because I haven't got a twin scroll manifold. It doesn't matter. You can run a twin scroll turbo on a single scroll manifold. It's common, it's normal, you know, there's no ill effects. But at the same time, really, really commonly, I see people going, oh, you know, that turbo's great, but I can't buy it because it's twin scroll and I'm not twin scroll. It's like, don't really matter. But this video isn't really about that. This video is about the fact that yes, you can just fit a twin scroll turbo to a single scroll manifold, no problem. But you can make it better, which is what I'm going to show you now. Because this one is a single scroll manifold. And this turbo is going on it. So basically, it's just about making things more efficient. So it's quite simple. This took me about, I don't know, 10 minutes with a die grinder. All I've done is made the divider thinner and then the edge bits of the divider I've smoothed in. It's basically about making the airflow have you know less or no flat surfaces to hit which just improves the airflow which well it's making it more efficient when it comes down to it that's what it's down to same as um port matching this to the manifold i already um i've checked this and to be honest i did it by making a little outline with dirt and to be honest, it's a good match already, so I'm not going to worry about actually port matching this to the manifold because it's near as damn it. But this is literally, because obviously, naturally, this is near enough as thick as that. It's about three, four times as thick as that. And all I've done is, you know, chamfered it a bit with the die grinder. And, you know, a few minutes work. So obviously it goes back to normal width within, you know, five mil. But this just means the exhaust gases don't just hit a flat area, which is just bad for flow, full stop. So, easy and effective way of making your twin scroll turbine housing even better on a single scroll. So that. And also, I'll show you a couple other things I've done to this while I'm at it. This is a um, HE351 8 centimeter, which is from a factory an internal wastegate turbo, or internal wastegate housing, I should say. And um, obviously it's easy to just weld the wastegate shut on a turbo and run it external gate. And uh, I think if I recall, Compressor Racing, who this is from, would do that free of charge anyway. But I'll show you it just in case you've got it from somebody else. All you realistically would have to do is, you know, weld the arm shut or weld it there or anything it, a spot weld would do because when it comes down to it, from the factory, it's only the actuator spring that's holding it shut. But, you know, you can go as far as you like. I've gone way further than that. I've welded most of the way along there and that. And also removed and welded up the uh, where the arm used to be. And just to make things neater, I even cut those two lugs off, which is where the actuator used to sit. No reason apart from aesthetic reasons, really. And yeah, super simple. Another thing I'll say is these 351s and HX35s and whatever, that's a, basically that V-band, a two and a half inch V-band, i.e. this fits fine. This is two and a half inch ID. The V bands are rarely exactly the same OD, but it, it makes no difference if it's close enough for a clamp. 
but I would say go straight to three inch. Two and a half's not big enough, really. I mean, ideally, you would get like a three inch uh, V bun like that and just weld it straight on, which is maybe what we do. I don't actually know. So it's up to Thomas what he wants to do. That's probably what I would do. On my 180T one, because that actually, although you would not never tell by looking at it, the turbo housing I used on that was actually internal gate originally, but I actually really went to town and I cut off everything. So I cut this whole back section off and then welded a V-band directly to the actual housing, which is best for flow, but in reality it's, you know, you're just, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily do that, but that's an option if you want to. You know what I mean? But um, because mine, I literally cut it right back to where the turbine wheel was, and then I had a four inch V band right from there. It's just maximizing turbo efficiency by doing things like that. But this way, super easy, and I would say worthwhile. That will basically improve sport. That's what a lot of it is. The um, you're not improving, well, you probably are, but it's not about maximum flow because most people would never max out the turbine side of a turbo anyway. This is about smooth flow. So it's mostly about helping spool up, really. And if you've not got twin scroll to help you, you want all the help you can get. So a nice small eight centimeter turbine housing and smoothing that out. It's gonna get your turbo spooling up faster than other people who just leave that shit alone. So, yeah, short video just to explain all that. And yeah, I'm gonna put this back together. This is the turbo now with the V band on it and all the things done. And to be fair, I think it looks far better now as well because having the lugs removed just makes it look like a small and neater turbine housing and yeah I really like it fucking properly good turbo fancy billet wheel loveliness and best of all it's got a proper turbine wheel too a really good one so uh, you know because to be honest that's got a bigger effect than the compressor wheel fanciness quite often it's the one thing that everyone ignores but yeah there you go and uh, on that note I'm gonna go home and in the next video this should be running this may well be running I literally got a leak test everything and do the fluids and change the plugs and yeah this should fucking start so uh, yeah, good times. Thomas made a uh, oil return for the turbo from that. Cause thing is, even this, it's, uh, it's a big dash 12 line, but internally, the, the pipe is big. The fittings, they never are. Even this, this is bigger than that one I've shown you over there, but this, I mean, this isn't, you know, it's not permanent yet. It's just, you know, finger tight. Um, gonna have to enlarge this a bit as well because otherwise, wow. Even though it's, it's above the oil line as well, which helps. But either way, I wouldn't be expecting it to be too happy unless you've got a decent oil return because, well, like I said, whole set ask for 19 mil plus and although you don't have to do that i mean on this one i've got 19 from the turbo most of the way down but the last six inches or so are um well it's basically using the standard 180 oil return so about 15 you know not small but less and this needs to be the same we might not need 19 but you want as big as you can because when it comes down to it, do you really want to have to do it again after when it the turbo's smoking? No, 
It's a lot easier to do it right first time. So look at the uh, oil outlet size on this turbo, this whole set. Let's just check the size. That is 20 mil. And whole set themselves, if you read like their official things, they say it requires a 19 mil or bigger ID oil return. And people think, oh, you know, I, I just get a uh, a big Dash 12 fitting. That's, that's, that's nice and big. You know, Dash 12 is technically that sort of size. It's like, yeah, but Dash 12 fittings are never that size in reality. And this is like a great example. This will fit to there perfectly. It's a typical sort of uh, flange you would buy off eBay. Look how small that is. Absolutely fucking tiny. Uh, I think so. 11 mil, 10 and a half mil. So literally half the size. Absolute dog shit. Basically, if you put this on with no changes, it's gonna smoke. It's not gonna be good. You're gonna end up with a smoky, leaky turbo. It's just, it ain't good at all. So yeah, this is why I generally get a, um, a piece of metal pipe and rubber hose and make my own return because these dash fittings, as pretty as they look, they're fucking not big enough. Simple as that. So yeah, that's enough of this short video. You will see this running and maybe this running in the next video very soon. Ta-da.